Uh, welcome back to Get It Right. Uh, today we are discussing uh, tomato farming here in Kenya and with us is Joseph Ongeri who is an agronomy consultant at Greenwise Innovators. Uh, so uh, Joseph, let's take it up from where we had left. We were talking about greenhouse, tomato, uh, growing tomato inside the greenhouses and we were looking at the disadvantages as well. You mentioned about uh, being able to keep away pests and diseases. Is it always the case? Are you always able to control pests and diseases 100% by use of greenhouses? Susan, mm -hmm. maybe to notify you, we started from the outdoor. The greenhouse came to solve the problems that are in the outdoor. Mm -hmm. The outdoor mm -hmm. has more disadvantages mm -hmm. than the greenhouse. I can say maybe, because I can't quit without one, the greenhouse is expensive to start. Okay. But the problems experienced in the outdoor are solved by the greenhouse. In the, in the outdoor, you get harsh conditions. Yes. Maybe the weather changes. Mm -hmm. Too much rainfall, mm -hmm. too much hot sun, and it gets your crop there. Yes. So you really have to fight with the use of chemicals, mm -hmm. the use of fertilizers, even more. Uh, as you cannot do in the greenhouses. Greenhouse. Yes. And maybe for those consumers who are very afraid of consuming tomatoes which are grown in greenhouses, so what can you tell them to make them feel safe while consuming this produce? No, just not to imagine that it had, it had to be, so many agrochemicals had to be used. Uh, maybe to start, mm -hmm. that uh, is to inform you that the greenhouse handlers mm -hmm. are more informed than the, those ones who are, I'm sorry to say that, <laughs> than those ones who are doing the outdoor. Yes. Because from the outdoor, we started the orthodox way, mm -hmm. our old way of farming. Mm -hmm. That's where we came from, then we came to the greenhouse. You cannot succeed in greenhouse farming mm -hmm. if you don't have this knowledge. Okay, yes. So uh, I'm bringing you to the agrochemicals. The use of agrochemicals, we train our workers, our farmers, on how to use, the best way to use these agrochemicals. Mm -hmm. We train them on pH high, pre-harvest interval. The, the time, uh, the, the, the chemical applied today is mm -hmm. going to take before we go to the harvesting. Okay. Such that our, our, our clients do not get really affected by the chemicals. So uh, what are the common pests and diseases that attacks tomatoes? Yeah, we have several uh, 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 number of pests that attack our tomatoes, mm -hmm. but the notorious one yes. uh, is the, the, the tuta absoluta. Yes, I this have heard that across every other tomato farmer that I've been able to visit. Yes, mm -hmm. the tuta absoluta is a very notorious uh, pest. It is a leaf miner, it is simply a leaf miner. A leaf miner uh, attacks first the leaves, mm -hmm. then find it, makes, it, it completes its circle in the leaves. Then the adult is able to, to mine mm -hmm. now the fruit and affects the quality. It's very hard to control the leaf miner, but we have chemicals which can uh, control that. Before I come to the control, we have other, other, pe other pests that affect mm -hmm. the, the tomato. We have the white flies. Mm -hmm. The white flies look simple but they are very notorious because should there be, happen to be a disease in the greenhouse, it will carry on to other plants. Mm -hmm. So the white fly, the white fly plus the, the, the tuta, they are, very, they are the worst. But I always advise my farmers mm -hmm. to start with the biological way of controlling uh, uh, these pests. Mm -hmm. The biological way is just to attract by, uh, by, by placing the yellow stickers, mm -hmm. the olivers, the yellow, the, 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 the white fly always are att att attracted by the yellow color. How so effective is that method? It does 60 percent. Okay. So when it does 60 percent, mm -hmm. the 40 percent you do it by the chemicals. Mm -hmm. So we also have the pheromone uh, mm -hmm. attraction, whereby we introduce uh, a pheromone which has some scent mm -hmm. to the male insects. Mm -hmm. They feel attracted to the female, which is not the female in this case. Mm -hmm. Then when they come to this, uh, uh, the, the Tusta sun, mm -hmm. 
we have a trap there, they get trapped. So we, we, we control by killing all the male, we, the female are left, so the generation is killed here. So we are able to control that biologically. Okay. Before we go to chemical, mm -hmm. we start biologically, then we go to chemical. Yes. So let's look at tomatoes are, are considered to be relatively easy to grow, but we still have farmers uh, making mistakes while, you know, while practicing tomato farming. What are some of these mistakes that you think farmers still are not able to counter? Yes, the first mistake I always say is to enter into business without knowledge. Mm -hmm. So as I said, you did a training to understand the requirements of the crop. Then you should know also what it, what it takes. Mm -hmm. You start the business, the farmer starts the business, then on the way he's not even able to finish the race. Mm -hmm. he, he knows maybe uh, the plant takes one full season, a whole year. He prepares for chemicals, he prepares for fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Before he even starts uh, uh, harvesting, he's done. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have enough money to buy. The, the, the protective uh, chemicals. So you should really prepare, know what it costs. Then they need the market, as I said. Mm -hmm. Before you do anything, you start from the up, from the market, going back to the field. So the mistakes, part of the mistakes we do is we don't understand the market. We need to understand the market. We need to understand the soils, as I said. Mm -hmm. Then we are able to go. Then don't go alone, mm -hmm. go with an expert. Yes. yes. And uh, what experience, or uh, from the countries that you've been able to visit, where can you rate us when it comes to technology and innovations where farming is concerned? Yes, I've been, I've been on several countries. I've been to Uganda, mm -hmm. I've been to Luanda, and our small country, Burundi. I can really tell you, Susan, we are much ahead. Well, we are actually We ahead. are actually much ahead. Mm -hmm. And the way we are pushing now, mm -hmm. we are really trying to bring our young generation mm -hmm. to enter into this business. Mm -hmm. I can assure you that we are going to command the whole of East Africa. It's only maybe to ask the government mm -hmm. to adjust on some policies. For instance, the, farmers, the, the, the products in Kenya, the agricultural products in Kenya, they're very expensive. Yes. That's why we get other uh, producers from other countries competing with ours. Because theirs, they are very cheap. Ours are very expensive. So when I'm trying to look to weigh the, the two, I find that Tanzania, uh, Uganda, China, they produce their products cheaply just because the policies are favoring the farmers. Oh yes. So let's look at some of the value addition processes that farmers can apply so as to prolong the shelf life of tomatoes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as you have said, one of the challenges we are getting as tomato farmers is the shelf life. Yes. Because we produce, mm -hmm. we don't have uh, the cold storages. Yes. We all want to meet in the market mm -hmm. and we want to sell everything at 30 days, which is not possible. Mm -hmm. So we are coming a long way. Mm -hmm. But I can encourage our farmers, those who are able, we enter into the processing of the tomato such that we add the value. Mm -hmm. By now, I know some cases where we are processing our tomatoes mm -hmm. into paste. Mm -hmm. We also have into pests. Yeah, tomato paste. Oh, tomato paste. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We are. We can process into tomato paste. Mm -hmm. We have powders. Mm -hmm. These powders can be kept for long before it is made into tomato paste. Mm -hmm. We have also other products. I uh, can't remember them all, but we need really to stop raw uh, tomato raw material consumption mm -hmm. because. If we depend on that, then it means we are all going to meet in the market. Yes. But the rate, the, the, the rate at which the consumption is needed is very low. So we need, really need the processing of this. We have in Jorokanas. Mm -hmm. Jorokanas is processing tomato paste. Mm -hmm. But we have only one or a few cases. Mm -hmm. If there are others, maybe uh, very small ones. Okay, so uh, for farmers who are, are looking at starting tomato farming, what is your word of advice that you can share with them? Food security in Kenya mm -hmm. is still a problem. We are insecure. Mm -hmm. We are not producing enough. Mm -hmm. There is really a big gap. For those who want to enter into this business, mm -hmm. there is a big room for them. Yes. I welcome them 
They come in, now that we are men in the field, we have many experts from private for, uh, to the government. So I'll always ask them to come in in the way maybe we are asking them, not to, from the orthodox way. This is a section that can employ so many of our people, okay. if done right. Mm -hmm. So there is room, there is space. I will really welcome them mm -hmm. and I promise that they'll do good business in tomato farming. Mm -hmm. yeah. And before we wrap up, uh, for those people who may want to penetrate the international market, what should they look at? What are the elements that they should consider? Yeah, the international market, Susan, needs quality. Mm -hmm. So as you said, uh, what are the challenges we really get in this industry? Mm -hmm. uh, when you want to enter into international market, you should be able to produce the, the best. Mm -hmm. So pest-free, yes. disease-free, and uh, uh, able to understand mm -hmm. even the way you feed your crop, mm -hmm. the standard crop, because you are going to compete with yes. the products from other countries. countries. Yes. So, uh, I will advise them mm -hmm. that they should understand the knowledge, get the knowledge mm -hmm. and produce the best. Mm -hmm. And producing the best is going hand in hand with the experts. Okay. So Joseph, what should the government do to boost, to boost agriculture here in Kenya, in your view? The government, our government has really a lot in boosting the, the agriculture sector in Kenya. And as I've said before, that it is a song that agriculture is the backbone of our country. Mm -hmm. And I'm even feeling, indeed, it's the, 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 the backbone of our country. Our government has a role, a big role, mm -hmm. to ensure that our people are, uh, have the knowledge yes. by taking trainings to the farmers. Mm -hmm. Not the farmers looking for trainings, but the government taking the trainings back to the farmers, looking for them and training them. Because you realize 70% of our farmers are in the rural areas mm -hmm. and most of them are very independent yes. without the, uh, the knowledge. They are fighting here and there looking for the, 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 the knowledge. But I'm, I'm really uh, appealing to the government that it should look for this farmer. And reach give, out to them. Reach out to them and give them the, the, the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Then nowadays, uh, we are doing things from the count uh, government. The count government can decide to build even the cold storages within which serves that county, yes. even to the district level, mm -hmm. where we can offload our products. Mm -hmm. We need the, the, the counties re, uh, act, proacting yes. to give us uh, the cold storage, mm -hmm. then the trainings, mm -hmm. even uh, enticing our, our, our youths. Mm -hmm. You realize, Susan, I don't know whether you, you want to be a farmer. Some days. Yes. <laughs> but uh, you realize that most farmers are aged. Yes. So the gap between those young people who don't want to do farming mm -hmm. and the aged is big. Yes. So I'm even feeling at some years later, mm -hmm. we might even lack something mm -hmm. to export. And we, the food um, security in Kenya might be even worse. So the government should come in and even uh, follow those who are students who are doing agriculture. Yes. Give them, mm -hmm. we have government lands. Mm -hmm. It can take some government lands, it gives the students, they give them the funds, at least they entice them. I know there are so many people who are still more hungry for more information, so how can they reach out to you? Do you have a website perhaps? Share with us on how we can get in touch with you. Uh, Susan, I'm very mobile. Mm -hmm. You can reach me on phone call. Yes. Uh, but we, I work from an office in Kitengela mm -hmm. at a building known as Prestige, mm -hmm. just uh, on your way to prisons. Mm -hmm. I'm in the ground floor, mm -hmm. uh, room number 33. Okay. And my contact is uh, 07 mm -hmm. 07 29 8397. You can also uh, follow on my page on, uh, on Facebook, Agronomy uh, Services. Yeah. So Joseph, thank you so much. That was very, very insightful. And uh, that brings us to the end of our show today. Be sure to catch another insightful episode of Get It Right. Until next time, it's bye-bye for now.